Good evening and welcome to the show which takes an irreverent sideways look askance at the wacky world of current affairs and the rib-tickling prospect of World War III. In the Gulf, the Iraqi Secret Service reveal the undercover troops being trained to infiltrate the Royal Scots Dragoon Guards. <laughs> Nearer home, Robert Maxwell reveals plans for a new indoor maze made up entirely of unsold copies of the European. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, the royal family have their car fleet modified in an effort to avoid any further speeding convictions. As usual, a cross-section of lowlife dredged from the worlds of comedy and journalism are here to see who's remembered most, or at any rate, who's forgotten least about the rest of the week's news. On my right, our regular team captain, the man behind the eye, a title only ever previously bestowed on Richard Ingrams and Cyclops, Ian Hislop. <laughs> and with him, formerly married to Brigitte Nielsen, star of Rockies 1, 2 and 3 and countless Rambo movies, <laughs> Arthur Smith. <laughs> I left our, uh, our Take that wig off, Angus. <laughs> if only I could. <laughs> on my left, our other team captain is a famous stand-up comic, so we're lucky to have caught him on a night when he's sitting down, Paul Merton. <laughs> and with him, a presenter on London's LBC Radio and Channel 4, a woman whom some people are already beginning to refer to as that presenter on LBC <laughs> Radio and Channel 4, Jill Pyra. Two points will be given for a right answer, one point for a brave stab, and no points for recognising Fatima Whitbread from a close-up of her nose, because that's <laughs> the wrong quiz show. So, uh, let's hurl ourselves wantonly into round one. Uh, Ian and Arthur, have a look at this person. Who is he, and who was he? Well, that, that's Black Jake from the Captain Pugwash program. <laughs> <laughs> now, this is actually, um, Cat Stevens who changed his name when he became a Muslim mm -hmm. to Dog Stevens. <laughs> uh, no, he didn't. To Yusuf Islam. And he's been in Baghdad on a mercy mission. He's going to stay there. Absolutely. <laughs> yes, absolutely right. Uh, two points. It's uh, Yusuf Islam, who used to be Cat Stevens on his way to rescuing four British hostages. The names were Dr. Mohammed Sadiq Rahim, who used to be Lieutenant Pigeon. <laughs> Dr. Syed Askari, who used to be the drummer out of Picty Witch, and Mohammed Ghulam Hussain and Anwar Haji Abdullah, both of whom used to be Dennis Roussos. <laughs> Paul and Jill, uh, you probably recognise this man, but uh, why the winning smile? Mikhail Gorbachev, he's just been announced as a new host for Come Dancing. <laughs> And he won the Nobel Peace Prize. He did indeed. Yes, he was more pleased about come dancing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he didn't have got his paid so much though. He, uh, he won the, the Nobel Peace Prize and got given £360,000, which is an extraordinary amount of money. Do you remember also... Pickety Witch then? <laughs> uh, welcome, Arthur. <laughs> Uh, he also won the uh, overwhelming popularity uh, or unpopularity of his own people. In an effort to bolster uh, his ratings in Russia, he's now offering uncensored footage of KGB atrocities and scenes of human degradation to Western television. Uh, in return, we're offering them blind date. <laughs> and I think we probably got the better of the deal. Um, Ian and Arthur, two questions uh, with one answer. Who's this and where is he? Uh, well... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who that bloke is, but he seems to be on top of Princess Anne. <laughs> Arthur will be apologising for that remark in the High Court. That's or not. That's Lester Piggott. Yes. And he's uh, uh, he's outside. <laughs> Nothing gets past you, does it, Ian? <laughs> Do we get yeah. a point for saying where he is? Uh, well, I think we should allow you to uh, try and guess. I have no idea where well, he is. I, I would suggest that he was definitely at some sort of race meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I don't think I'll give you any points for that. <laughs> In fact, 
<laughs> he's already said it by saying his name. Absolutely. Is right. it Lester? Is it? it's he Lester at Lester. Lester? Yes, it's, oh. uh, it's almost amusing. Professor um, <laughs> Piggott, on his first day back as a jockey at Leicester Races, uh, he didn't win that day, although he did have £5 million riding on him, uh, most of which, which was uh, hidden under the saddle. Calling <laughs> <laughs> Jill, uh, some footage of a dummy for you. Fergie and Di on another of their fancy dress outings. Yes. Vivian Westwood, uh, fashion designer of the year. And do you know what she said when, well, she, when she got that award? She said that she thinks 90s youth is brain damaged to dress the way they do. And she's won the designer of the year award. Well, it's right. as easy. <laughs> it's as easy. I'll, give you, I'll give you an extra point for that. She criticised right. Sue Lawley. She's a bit rich, don't you think? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> Yes, she did win the Designer uh, of the Year award and uh, publicly criticised uh, the British people's uh, fashion sense. Presumably, uh, Miss Westwood and her friends think that uh, we'd all look better dressed in one of their new designs, such as this biscuit bra. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, turns dunking into a dangerous sport. <laughs> <laughs> Which uh, brings us to the end of this uh, pulsating first round. And, uh, well, Paul and Jill have a confident six, and Ian and Arthur have a slightly dire four. <laughs> oh, God. Well, time now for our competition in which we ask our panellists to come up with captions, something which we call our captions competition. <laughs> sort of shorthand we have. Uh, Paul and Jill, uh, you have this to ridicule. Uh, Ian and Arthur, yours looks like this. <laughs> and between now and the end of the programme, in moments of extreme boredom, we'd like you to think up a caption or two. But uh, for the time being, we're going to show you some tabloid headlines, whether you like it or not. One each for you to identify. Paul, uh, who has this much dirty washing? Laundry bill of £63,000. Oh, um, this is the, the Queen has a laundry bill of £63,000. Um, and um, it went up by £15,000 when she heard that Prince Andrew was going to be marrying Fergie. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yes, and there's a man who's like the royal knicker collector who has to come round and pay her tongs. Because by English law, you're not allowed to touch the Queen's knickers. <laughs> oh, I've touched them. <laughs> yeah, and you did six months for it. <laughs> Best six months of my life. Uh, but yes, yeah, two points. Uh, it's uh, Majesty the Queen and Household who spends an annual £63,000 on laundry, so she obviously has the service wash. She also uh, <laughs> spends £2.3 million a year on travel by train. Uh, you'd have thought she'd have a rail card by now, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Jill, this one isn't about Buckingham Palace. A uh -huh. bedsit which is home to 75 workers. This is actually a bedsit in Cricklewood, I think, where there were three people living, but 75 were registered to vote in a union ballot. Their computer had got hundreds of people all over the country. And they turned up to check at this place, and one of the three said, well, if there should be 75 here, the other 72 are very quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you're absolutely right. It's UCAT, in fact, the uh, Construction <laughs> Workers' Union. Uh, and there are allegations of vote rigging over the names on their electoral roll. And at one Hackney address, there are allegedly four members called Mr. M.G. Burford, Mr. M.G. Burford, Mr. M.G. Burford, <laughs> and Mr. M.G. Burford, I think that's how it's pronounced. Uh, General Secretary of UCAT, Albert Williams, explained, I think it's just administrative errors. <laughs> and uh, his three identical twins agreed with him. <laughs> Arthur, uh, what's this cryptic pun alluding to? Lunacy. Did they have a number one hit, Pickersy Witch? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, it seems to sort of be something about mentally unbalanced people going to the toilet, but <laughs> unless that's the... <laughs> which, which papers have you read? This, <laughs> this is from The sport. Independent, clearly. <laughs> mm. Oh, you laughed very loudly at that. Um, do you know the actual answer? Yes, um, I do, unfortunately. Um, it's uh, headmasters told school kids to bring a roll of loo with them to school oh, to yes. save money. Two rolls each a year. Yeah. Yes, absolutely right. The children at the St Paul's Church of England Primary School in Stafford have been asked to provide their own toilet paper. It's, uh, it's the mothers, I feel sorry for, having to sew on name tags on every sheet. <laughs> Finally, uh, in this round, Ian, uh, auntie and girls make men think twice. This is Esther Ranson who says that there should be more women in the BBC. 
I've always thought there was one too many. <laughs> um. yes, you're, you're, you're virtually right. Uh, it wasn't actually anyone quite as high up as Esther Ranson. It was the BBC Director General, Michael Checkland, <laughs> uh, <laughs> who's announced that uh, by 1996, one half of all BBC executives must be female. So the big question for most executives now is which half to have done. <laughs> And uh, at the end of all that, the score is, well, Paul and Jill, uh, they have a solid 12, and Ian and Arthur have a rather flimsy 5. Oh. <laughs> Tatty selection of unconnected film clips that is round 3. All you have to do is guess which story we've expertly cobbled together in the following. Ian and Arthur, have a look at this. Ah, yes. It's a high court judge. Isn't it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> That's Gaza. Yeah. Um, That's the young conservatives. <laughs> Donald Sindon. <laughs> Jason Donovan's dad. <laughs> uh, that's me, isn't it? Um. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're supposed to stop looking at the monitor now. Um, <laughs> what have those uh, four things got to do with each other? Ah, yes, it was a judge, wasn't it, who didn't know who Gaza was. Correct. And uh, what was the football and the football rugby business then? Well, the, the judge, I mean, it's the first time I think I've ever approved of anything a judge has done. Um, Gaza came into court claiming that no one could write a book called Gaza because Gaza was a trademark. Whereas, in fact, Gaza's just a stupid name. <laughs> The judge was fantastically snobbish and said, who is Gaza? Uh, and uh, the QC, who's paid a lot of money to know who Gaza is, said um, he's a very famous footballer. And the judge said, association or rugby, um, which was very snobbish. And then he said, is there not a light operetta called the Gaza Ladra? Um, which wonderfully there, there is. Um, and you're a clever git. <laughs> Well, you're right, yes, it's one of the fullest answers we've ever had on this programme. <laughs> it's uh, Mr Justice Jeremiah Harmon, who claimed he'd never heard of uh, Paul Gascoigne, and uh, yes, you're right, he was, uh, he was uh, told that he was famous, and the judge asked if he was as famous as the Duke of Wellington was in 1815, <laughs> uh, which is obviously the last time that the judge had read a newspaper. <laughs> um, and yes, he, he, uh, he asked if Gaza was anything to do with uh, La Gaza Ladra, which he explained was an Italian opera, meaning the Sicilian ladder. Uh, which was an impressive translation, were it not for the fact that it actually is the thieving magpie. <laughs> anyway, uh, any letters of protest should be sent to Mr Justice Harmon, the old rectory, Planet Andromeda. <laughs> uh, Paul and Jill, here's your unsavoury compilation. This is Cecil Parkinson, obviously. Um, but all his secrets are out, aren't they? Blood test to see if he's the father. <laughs> yes, that's Cecil, all right. <laughs> Jeffrey Howe playing with his love child in the park. <laughs> uh, Cecil Parkinson demonstrates new contraceptive devices. <laughs> there are, oh, a diaphragm. The final, <laughs> calling the final hurdle. Next, please. <laughs> yes, very good. You can have a point for that, but now what's the real answer? Oh, um... <laughs> Lester Piggott winning at the end there. He, he said, um... He said that if the, if the cabinet was a racehorse, he wouldn't bet on it. Yes, he did. He did, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, absolutely right. Yes, yes. Uh, Cecil Parkinson, who was allegedly overheard at dinner at the uh, Royal Bath Hotel in Bournemouth, rubbishing Geoffrey Howe and John Selwyn Gummer. Perfectly reasonable behaviour, you might think. <laughs> he also apparently said that if the cabinet was a racehorse, uh, he wouldn't bet on it. Of course, if it was a racehorse, then it'd probably be doing a better job. And, uh, and so... Oh, I don't think that's strictly true. Because, <laughs> I mean, a racehorse would find it very difficult to deal with the sort of, like, ins and outs of government business, really. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it would, you know. Yes. But a meeting sort of foreign ministers, they might not respect it. <laughs> <laughs> and so we move on to our uh, mini headlines round. Mini headlines, I'm bound to tell you, are the individual subtitles which are used to break up big tabloid mm. stories like this. Oh. There you are. Our teams yeah. score points by guessing which story their mini headlines come from or concocting a better story. It's the only show where you get credit for lying, apart from today in Parliament, of course. Uh, <laughs> Ian and Arthur, here's yours. Janet Street Porter. <laughs> no, it doesn't get a laugh, <laughs> it? Janet... Well, it is her. She forgot she was a human being. Um, 
Oh my god, they're coming fast here, aren't they? Uh, Janet, uh, no, she's got a toothbrush, whipped out a billiard cue, it cannon four times against her teeth. <laughs> um, and that, curiously, was the story. Not much of one, but. Well, you two don't know the answer to this question. No, you do. Right. <laughs> It's, uh, I'll tell you, it's the pissed vicar of Royden in Essex. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> is he still his... going? <laughs> yes. That's his uh, full ecclesiastical title. Uh, the only slightly reverend Leonard uh, Garland, who was rather the worse for wear when he conducted the wedding of Karen and Jeff Brandon. He repeatedly referred to the bride as Janet, uh, forgot the words of the ceremony, whipped through it at double speed, <laughs> then drove off and cannoned into another car, got out, apologised to the driver, then smashed into the headlights of another car. This was all still in the car park, by the way. Uh, he was finally arrested and found to be four times over the limit. He's now been offered a regular slot on Wogan. <laughs> uh, Paul and Jill, a similarly cryptic assembly for you. Hairline, children, homeopathic, Christian. No, Christian's the giveaway, I think. So, not said yes. I'm a the same, then. Yes, you're right. Mm, yes. <laughs> it's um, uh, Cliff Richard. Exactly. Um, he's... Uh, if he has, uh, if his hairline recedes, he'll have plastic surgery. He's always wanted children. He, he denies claims that he's a homeopathic. <laughs> and, um, and he corroborates this by living with a Christian. Yes. <laughs> well, bits of that are right. I'll give you, uh, I'll give you one point for that. It is Cliff Richard. Uh, why was he in the news? Fifty, 50 years old. Fifty years old. Yes, yes two points then. Uh, and during that time, he's been to bed with just one girl. He's had 103 hit singles and over 45 albums in the top 40. So just think how successful he could have been if sex hadn't got in the way. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and at the end of that pulsating round, the score is uh, Paul and Jill have a vibrant 17, and Ian and Arthur have a rather flaccid 8. Time now for our virtually entertaining archive <laughs> round, which in past programmes has taken the form of a What Happened Next game. As some people have quite rightly pointed out, that this is a direct lift from Question of Sport. So this week, suitably chastened, we've decided to do the decent thing and instead lift an entirely different game from Question of Sport. <laughs> Ian and Arthur, uh, can you identify this person? Grampian TV's remake of Robocop. <laughs> <laughs> no expense spared. Um, no. <laughs> it's Ian McGregor. It, well, it's same Ian thing. <laughs> <laughs> Virtually. Yes, let's just have a look and see if we can catch a glimpse of him. He's sniffing glue. <laughs> Yes, uh, it's uh, Ian McGregor, coal board chairman at the time of the miners' strike. Uh, in order not to draw attention to himself, he decided to walk about with a plastic bag. <laughs> Which is a handy little tip if you want to remain incognito. Um, Paul and Jill, your turn. Uh, Thomas the tank engine pulled into the station. <laughs> um, London Fire Brigade unveil new engine. This, this was a rather obvious one, I think pure our visual metaphor. Mm -hmm. He was running with Neil Kinnock. This was what I had to do for the leadership of the party. Very good. Let's have a look. From the earliest days, I enjoyed the double fantasy of being Emil Zatopek and David Coleman simultaneously. <laughs> Through the purple haze and hydrogen bus, the unmistakable voice drove me on. His legs have turned to jelly. Only courage keeps him going now. If his legs had turned to jelly, Roy Hatsley would have eaten it. <laughs> I suppose you can have another point for that. Yes, it's our, uh, our old friend Roy Hattersley, who it turns out likes to keep in shape. Pretty odd shape to want to keep in shape. <laughs> anyway, so as we come uh, hurtling to the end of that round, the score is uh, Paul and Jill have a super sore away 19, and uh, Ian and Arthur have a rather turgid 13. Well, it's an odd one out round now. Four faces each. One of them is odder than the others. Uh, difficult to believe with this lot, but Paul, uh, here you are. The lovely Cyril Smith, the lovely Geoffrey Dickens, Fergie, and the lovely Madonna. Um, Ma Madonna, because all the rest are great big fat lumps. <laughs> Um, um, <laughs> a uh, not the rapier wit of Paul. <laughs> Am I allowed to have a mouth? 
I uh, think oh, yes. Madonna is, as far as I know, the only one who's going out with someone who's had their nipples pierced. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wouldn't like to dispute that. Um, I can't give you any um, Oh, I don't know. It is, in fact, uh, Fergie, because she's the only one not to have appeared in a pop video. Uh, Madonna's made one or two in her time, and Jeffrey Dickens and Cyril Smith appeared in the Bananarama video together. Must Good. have been uh, one hell of a wide-angled lens. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Jill, here's your group of international fine, misfits. Kurt Valheim, Jesse Jackson, Ted Heath, and Yasser Arafat. Which one would that, that be? That would be Kurt Valheim, because he's the only one who looks good in an SS uniform. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can have a point for that, but uh, in fact it's Ted Heath, of course, because he's the only one not to have visited Saddam Hussein. Um, Saddam must be beginning to, uh, beginning to wonder what's hit him. Six million troops on his border uh, are one thing, but having Kurt Valheim and Cat Stevens turn up on your doorstep in the same room. <laughs> I don't know why we don't just send Edwina Curry out and finish him off now. <laughs> Arthur, uh, who's eating this lot? Lester Piggott? Macca? Nacker. <laughs> and and what a coincidence, I'm meeting them all in the pub afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> They've all been in Nick, except Ken Dodd. Yes, right. absolutely right. It's Ken Dobb because he's the only one not to have been in jail. And uh, that's obviously because he's completely innocent and has never fiddled his tax in any way. <laughs> um, left to pick it, we can uh, take as red. Uh, Nelson Mandela has spent more of his adult life in jail than out. And Macker, or Paul McCartney as he's known to his friends, was jailed in Japan for being found in possession of an untalented wife. <laughs> Let's have a look at yours. Uh, Ronald Reagan, Auburn War, uh, the Pope, and Geoffrey Archer. Oh, how very unpleasant. Um, they're all novelists except Geoffrey Archer. Uh, Ronald Reagan is writing his memoirs, um, which isn't yes. going to take too long. Auburn War, interestingly, is also writing his memoirs and claims he can't remember anything about his life and is asking people to help out. The Good. Pope is, is, um, he wrote a play once, and Geoffrey, oh, was well... I was in it, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the Pope's play. What was it about, Arthur? It was a farce about vicars and trousers and things. <laughs> Um, I'm afraid we have no idea. No, well, you're right insofar as it's Geoffrey Archer, so you can have a point for that, but it's actually because he's the only one who's never been shot. There's no justice <laughs> in there, isn't it? Um, Which begs the question, why? <laughs> Yeah, the Pope and Reagan, I'm sure you'll remember, uh, were victims of assassination attempts. Uh, Auburn War managed to shoot himself in the foot during uh, national service in, in <laughs> Actually, uh, that, that's not quite true. He shot himself in the guts and the hand. Oh. Uh, when a machine gun went wild. Cool, you uh, know everything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> We at Private Eye are very concerned about accuracy. <laughs> Unlike all the war, by the sounds of it. Uh, <laughs> which uh, futile piece of information brings us to the end of that round. And uh, Paul and Jill have an, an ecstatic 20, and Ian and Arthur have a rather post coital 16. <laughs> Well, we glide gracefully into our final deciding round. Each team is shown four headlines, but with a word or two missing. Their job is to identify the missing word or provide a better alternative. As usual, the team furthest from being in the lead go first. So, Ian and Arthur, I think that probably means you. You have, uh, you have that does. dubious honour. <laughs> right, first up is uh, cut our what? <laughs> so, MPs. Toenails. Uh, no, sadly, ours, not. Ours, ours is yes. correct. Very good. Next up is PM revives dead what? Husband. <laughs> no. Elvis. It's impossible. Dead parrot. Um, next up is Pope gives married priests his what? His condoms. Uh, you'd think his, so. Um... <laughs> Is not correct. Uh, the actual answer is blessing, which you weren't going to get, were you? Rude cops feel Maggie's collar. <laughs> and about time too. Oh, it's thank pathetic, God. isn't it? Yes, Obviously, you're supposed to say breasts or something. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, really, you're just setting up cheap jokes like that, really. I mean, I think it's poor. I'd rather listen to Ian go on about the interesting yeah. details of British politics. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, it's not breasts. I'm happy to say. Uh, any further guesses before I? 
Wrath. Hit you around the head. Uh, Anger. Wrath, I'll give you, yeah, I'll give you, uh, it's actually fury, but I'll give you some points for, for, for Wrath. Good. <laughs> and uh, Paul and Jill, your turn. Uh, first up is Headmaster, who ate his what? <laughs> <laughs> New gymnasium block. <laughs> Uh, a point for being surreal, but... Uh, <laughs> uh, head boy? Uh, <laughs> words is correct. Words? Uh, next up is Diana's What Resigns? Gynecologist. <laughs> Philosophy Hair tutor? Style. Philosophy tutor. <laughs> Philosophy tutor. <laughs> <laughs> is, uh, oh, no, it was no, actually a detective. Correct. Driver. It was, it was uh, detective. Driver, I'll give you a chauffeur. point for, because no, it, it was chauffeur, yeah, well done. But it was the detective who had to resign, wasn't it? Uh, quite possibly, but this one was chauffeur. <laughs> You haven't, uh, what? Maggie warns Neil. Prayer. Prayer is absolutely right. Yeah. We thought it was comb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right, you can have a point with that. And lastly, with the scores neck and neck, uh, history will tell whether Bush is a what or what? Crap or rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> is not correct. Hero or wimp? Hero Shrub or, wimp. or plant? <laughs> I'll, I'll take hero or wimp, I think. So, at the end of that rousing contest, the final score is, well, Paul and, Paul and Jill are the rampant victors with 26, and Ian and Arthur the gallant losers with 24. So, it's uh, congratulations to our winners, but for our losers, all is not entirely lost, because we still have our caption competition. Uh, Paul and Jill, what have you come up with uh, for this? Take that, you old bag. <laughs> <laughs> or, uh, or, Charles, you're not the man I married. <laughs> right, that's very good. Ian and Arthur, let's have a look at yours. Um, new Perrier advert. Time for you to go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mrs yes. Thatcher swallows Colin Moynihan. <laughs> My thanks to our panellists, uh, Ian Hislop and Arthur Smith, Paul Merton and Jill Pyra. And I'll leave you with news that Sue Barker has finally come up with a new scheme to ensure that British tennis players get past the first round of Wimbledon. <laughs> and finally, following the shock Tory defeat at Eastbourne, Mrs Thatcher today announced plans to start a new career outside politics. <laughs> Good night. Tomorrow night at 10, it's the second and concluding part of a series that looks at the elite SO10 police squad and the pressures that the officers face living multiple lives. That's Undercover Cops, Sunday at 10. Next tonight, more Have I Got 1990 for you.